Fosse Verdon got 17 Emmy nominations, including two for uh, directing, uh, one for uh, my star for my guest today, uh, Oscar-winning dire uh, director uh, Jessica Yu. And Jessica, you know, I I was as I was going back, I remember you giving in your Oscar acceptance speech one of my favorite lines, uh, <laughs> talking about being in strange territory when your dress costs more than your film. Yeah. And so, so when you're in that kind of space of, you know, it's now 20 years after that, how has directing for you changed? And, and how did that bring you to this project? Oh, hmm, that's a good one. I haven't asked, been at that one before. Um, well, I'd say certainly uh, the explosion that we see um, of content in streaming, everyone talks about it, but just the creativity, the fact that you can have um, a show about anything has just opened up the possibility. So I think that's a very big difference um, from when I started doing scripted work. Uh, of course, I started off in documentaries and uh, I liked the freedom of documentaries, even if the budgets weren't very high. And now you see a lot of freedom in uh, the in streaming content and limited series. So it's a really exciting time. And so when you when you look at a show like Fosse Verdon, so how much how much did you know about these two people before you before when this project came came to you? Probably like a lot of uh, viewers, I knew about Bob Fosse. I had seen all that jazz. I'd seen um, some of the other work, and I had maybe heard about Gwen Verdon. So this was a real eye opener, and uh, the team there gave me a lot of uh, source material. Of course, we had the benefit of Nicole Fosse being on set all the time, uh, being a direct resource. So uh, there was a lot to be soaked up. And there, there was a lot of responsibility with that as well, just wanting to make sure that uh, you did your part to get this world right. So let's talk about this, this particular episode, episode four, uh, Glory uh, is such a is such a heightened episode in so many ways, but it's also yet a very you know kind of intimate drama um, as we see kind of this this really dark side of of Fosse um, in the beginning and certainly in working with the Pippin cast. So how did you approach balancing kind of like the 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 intimate drama with the more heightened reality of like the nightclub scenes and the awards uh, montage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I was so excited when I got this script because it was, uh, I thought it was extraordinary, but it's also, it's a very um, internal, it's a very, uh, as you say, intimate um, story. And then you have this sort of, um, imaginative explosion at the end that kind of brings things to a head. Um, so I think the, the whole episode is building towards that. And what the episode really is about is you have Bob Fosse, incredibly um, brilliant, talented, but he's someone who always has to fight against something. And so now he's at a point in his career where he gets everything he's dreamed of and having to face the void when everything, all your wishes come true and somehow it's not fulfilling you, you're not happy. And what does that, that mean about who you are and what your life means? And so um, that's where the episode is leading to. So uh, one thing that I liked right away was the idea of leaning into the, the sameness of getting these awards. And so, you know, he, he gets the, you know, the Oscar, the Tonys, the Emmys, and so you'll see that there's a lot of sort of visual repetition in there and then uh, varying the pace. So you can see that it's just all coming at him, but nothing feels as different. Nothing feels like, like the wind that it should be. Yeah, it's really interesting that you say that because one of the things I noticed watching it, rewatching it the other day was, was that, you know, there's, it's almost sort of this pattern of get the award, you know, and then you cut to these kind of dimly lit, like club bar party scenes and, and the drugs and the women. And so just technically, how did you go about pulling that off? Because it's a lot of different elements all kind of coming together very quickly. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess we were taking the idea of it's like getting a high, whether it's high from drugs, sex, or um, or these awards. And so a lot of it is in the the the, the pacing of it and uh, these little sort of granular details of these moments. Um, but some of it, uh, like there's this sequence where we filmed um, Bob in this uh, sort of nightclub space and it's actually pre studio 54 but there we wanted to create this feeling of um being lost in a club like that and it's fun until it's not you know and so um that was really fun also just to be able to create a space uh where sam rockwell can just dance <laughs> i mean <laughs> work does not get any better than that so that was uh that was a real pleasure. I was just thinking it was kind of funny how this whole episode is about how, you know, the, the emptiness of achievement, if you don't have, uh, you know, if you're not connected to ground it to, to something that's meaningful to you. And so um, uh, Joel Fields had uh, emailed me a nice congratulations. And I wrote back, and it was kind of ironic that, th that this episode is about the emptiness of awards. And I said, you know, this feels pretty good to be nominated, but I think as long as we don't celebrate, with Coke and Quaaludes, we'll be okay. <laughs> I, I guess that's not too much to ask. <laughs> um, and and so there are so, one of the main elements of this. There is also kind of this production, this musical. It's it's kind of like a journey through the creation of so much of this art. And so how how experienced were you in terms of? you know, filming like the, the dance sequences and the production numbers and what kind of challenges did those uh, give you? God, it was just, um, it was so much fun. I think a big part of it is just that this team that, uh, that was assembled, I mean, you have um, in terms of producers, you know, Tommy Kale, Stephen Levinson, Joel Fields, um, and the, the whole team, um, the crew, Tim Ives, the DP, Susie Meisner, the choreographer. I mean, everybody was just A-list and the best people to collaborate with. So I had didn't have experience um, shooting a, a dance sequence. I mean, this purely, uh, uh, this pure of a dance um, experience. And also with this idea of um, making it something more than like a stage performance. So I remember the first meeting, I was thinking, okay, do they do they know that, that I don't have this background? But within a couple seconds of talking to them, what you got was this sense of, hey, we're all doing this together. Uh, everyone bring best ideas to the table. And it was collaborative in the, the best sense of, of the word. So, um, so that said, it was not up to me to figure out how to choreograph this. And we had on the music side, you know, Alex, Lack Alex Lackmore, the, who was, um, created this uh, this this the music that uh, integrated the text that then we um, the, the dance was choreographed to and then the shots were built on so again it was just everybody coming together and making it work as a whole so um, it was just a, a fantastic experience so you definitely have you know these these heavyweight actors uh, in this uh, you know, with not just Sam and Michelle, but Margaret Qualley and Norbert Leo Butts and, and, and all of these people. So, so how did, how did you work with each of them? I mean, you're coming in for one episode. So, so how did you work with all of them together and, and what was your approach with working with them? You know, uh, with this, we were so lucky in that we actually had rehearsal time. So there was rehearsal time that was available for, uh, for, us as we needed it. So some of it was discussion about what, uh, which scenes we wanted to um, to to rehearse. So the scenes uh, between um, Sam and the dancer that he pushes himself onto, uh, wonderful actress Alexis Carre, uh, that she and Sam and uh, and I we all talked about it, um, blocked it out, and that it was almost like. Uh, blocking, I guess, an emotional stunt, you could say. And so we had the time to address those scenes that everyone felt um, needed to be to be given time. And of course, with the dance as well. So it's really on a case by case basis what uh, what particular actors um, 
want to discuss what material, uh, how we just need to set it up so that on the day when we shoot it, we've created a space where now it can just um, happen in the, the, the best way possible. Um, so again, you don't always get that that uh, amount of rehearsal time and, and permission to explore before uh, you're actually there and um, setting up equipment and rolling. It's interesting because it's, it's, you know the show be, it is called Fosse Verdon, and and in this particular episode, you know you see kind of Bob at the height while Gwen is suffering kind of you know these personal. Mm -hmm setbacks even though she was as much responsible for his success as anybody else um yeah. so what what do you think this not just this episode but the series at whole says about you know why this you know magnificently talented woman um didn't necessarily reach the the same stratosphere that that fossey did yeah i mean that was uh something again eye-opening to discover that she was um uh, that she was the famous one when they met. And then this is the point, as you say, where their trajectories are going in opposite directions. Um, so, I mean, I think that uh, to speak to the series as, as a whole, it might be uh, better to, to talk to the writers about that. But I was thinking in this particular episode, it's certainly looking at what are the factors, what were the attitudes that enabled um, uh, men, to, I mean, again, I think I, what I really appreciated in the series was the fact that it was not a revisioning of um, of that time. It was trying to take an honest look at what was going on. In other words, it wasn't um, sort of uh, trying to present Bob in a uh, a different post me to light. It was really looking at, hey, what was going on here? Why were women not speaking up so much? Why were the men able to get away with this? Why were things tipped in this direction? But um, I think it was just done in a very um, intelligent and, and clear eyed way. Yeah, and one of the most, uh, to me, one of the most, you know, kind of the saddest moments in that episode is when Gwen's play is struggling and she asked Bob to to assist, and he won't do it, even though she's dropped everything in order to, in order to, you know, there's almost like this strange, she's willing to do this for him, but he's not willing to do that for her. And so, you know, Gwen really comes across more, you know, at, at least as a, as somebody who doesn't get the same opportunity because she's a woman. Right, that the, the rules uh, don't apply equally. I think that's a really good point. I mean, that um, Bob could have affairs within the relationship, and that was okay, but uh, she can't um, mention her, I mean, if, you know, the, the whole notion of her having a boyfriend, uh, that that's not okay. And uh, yeah, so it was not, it was not an equal thing. And then it's so complicated, though, isn't it? Because they also very much uh, love each other. So. Um, Again, it's not a simple black and white view of um, this is person good, this person bad. That it's it's the contracts, but uh, the personal contracts between people um, have are seen in the the context of the time, and I think that that's what makes this show really stand out. So, coming from the world of documentary filmmaking, and it, do do tools that you use in documentary filmmaking do they transfer to narrative filmmaking or are they completely different animals god i you know so hard to know i, I would say in in documentary um you uh you know you're sort of chasing the the spontaneous moment and you know you get it or you don't so i think that there's a uh i think that that's sort of a good uh the training that you're setting up to to create the circumstances where you can capture uh, the capture those moments that you're going to build your story around. Um, but it's hard to say. I mean, with documentaries, I mean, I was going to say I come out of independent documentaries, but they're all kind of <laughs> embedded. And so, you know, you're working on a project where you have a tiny crew, you have little equipment. And so the scale of things uh, is very different. That said, I think trying to find some intimacy uh, when you're actually shooting, I and mean, that's always 
that's always the the goal. So um, yeah, maybe it's. I'm sure there's there's a more articulate way for me to connect that, but uh, I haven't really <laughs> to analyze it. Um, yeah. So just as a kind of a closing thought, this episode really talks about what success has done to to Bob Fosse. Um, you know, it's been uh, you know over two decades since you won your Oscar. What did that moment? How did that moment change the trajectory of your career, or did it? Oh gosh, yeah. Um, well, I think you know if you win a a, a documentary, uh, if you win win an Oscar for a documentary, there's um, part of it that is just uh, that now all your friends and family know what it is you do, <laughs> and so uh, that's that's really nice. But I guess in a weird way, even though it's so public, it feels very personal because um, you have a pretty small circle of uh, people that you who know what you've been doing and and worked with you and. Uh, but certainly after that, it was possible to explore other avenues. It's always difficult, I think, but uh, I do feel very lucky to have been able to just keep working on projects that I really care about, whether they're um, nonfiction or uh, scripted. So yeah, I'm sure it helped me just be able to have a career and keep doing keep doing this so um very grateful for that i mean i was so surprised by this this nomination um yeah it was it was pretty delightful i mean an amazing company to be with but again you got definitely have a, a big thank you to the cast and crew and everybody on on the fossey burden team because it was uh I, it was a reward enough working on on the show uh it was just really extraordinary well, Jessica, you congratulations. Uh, best of luck at the Emmys. Uh, everybody log on to thegoldderby.com, uh, make your predictions for the Emmys, and uh, we'll be having more chats with Emmy nominees throughout the season. Uh, Jessica, great to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Take care.